Now I've had some questions about motors, three-phase motors specifically. But first of all, let's find out what is inside of a motor. Inside of a motor, you're going to have, well, first of all, you're going to have the casing like this. Inside of it, you're going to have the rotor, the part that rotates right there. We're also going to have the windings. Your wires come in here like this. You have windings on the inside, and then your wires leave. Now, we know that on three-phase motors, we have a total of three wires coming out. Plus, on top of that, we have to also have our ground wire that grounds the casing out. Now, we have the three wires coming out, and we usually typically hook them up to L1, L2, and L3. But what are those, what, what, where do those wires go to? We're going to start off very, very simple. And I'm going to say that inside, typically for what we do, we are going to be using three windings like this. And usually they're going to be in what they call a Y configuration. If you notice, yeah, it's kind of upside down Y, but that's a Y configuration. And we can take this one and we can hook this up to L1, hook this one up to, let's say, L2, and then this one on up to L3. That's basically what we're going to have in the motor. So let's say that if we were to troubleshoot this motor, we're going to check from here to here, and let's say that we get uh, 2 ohms. 2 ohms there. So that means that from here to here, we should also get the same two ohms like that. That also tells me that between this one here and this one here, I should get the same two ohms like this. If you get different readings, then that's, gonna t that's a problem right there but this is for a three lead motor. This is a three lead motor. There are motors with six leads, nine leads, and 12 leads. We're gonna to get to those later, but for right now, <clears throat> what can go wrong with a motor? Well, believe it or not, with any electrical device, there are only three problems, open, short, and ground. Now I'm gonna make a video where I explain what all of these are later on, but very basically, with an open, what happens is, yes, it's a break in the lines. So now, if this line was broken, this would not be 2 ohms. This, we would get what they call OL. Or in other words, open line. Some people say open lead, open line, whichever, same thing. Your meter will say OL on it, which means that they cannot get through. It cannot get through there, so now this motor is going on, only going to run on this winding, and it's not going to go at all. If this was to open when the motor was running, then the motor would keep running. Your amperage would go up, but it would not start up again. It just would not start. If the motor's off, then it's not going to start because that is open. The magnetic field cannot travel around there. I will explain more of that in a separate video. But again, like I said, here we would not get the two ohms. You would get OL on your on your on your meter. Now, the other thing is that we these lines. When you check from this line to this line, you should have a reading. This one to that one, you should have a reading. From L3 to L1, you should have a reading. Like we said, in all the reading should be the same. Another check you might want to make is to go from one of the windings here to the casing. Once we check that on your meter, then we should get what? We should get OL, open lead or open line. We should never have a connection from any of these to the casing. If we do, then the motor is bad.
Now, another thing that we're going to check is, like I said, the resistance on this. This is what one of the first things that I do is check the resistance, make sure that they are all the same. Now, if they're not the same, that tells me that there's a problem and that motor is just going to be bad. One of the questions that I usually get from students is that they will say, well, what is that resistance supposed to be? Well, the easiest thing for me to tell you is to see if you can find a motor that is similar to it. Actually, a motor that is the same as that one. Because if you check that motor and you see that your windings are, let, are two ohms, you know that this motor is good because all of the readings that you took, the three readings, are reading two ohms. So now you know that you have the proper ohm reading. Ohm readings are very important because that's the only way to know if your motor is starting to fail. Most of the time, we hook up a motor, we put it in, and forget about it. Well, we need to do the maintenance on the motor. We need to clean the motor. We need to make sure that it's lubricated. And depending on the size of the motor, we may want to check the amperage and resistance, let's say once a year. That way, we know when the motor is starting to fail. We can keep track of it and we can make sure that that motor is working like it's supposed to. So again, this is just a very quick rundown on, on three-phase motors. I'm going to make another video where we talk about electrical problems and then I will make another video where I'm explaining about, like I said, more about the three, the six, the nine, and the 12 lead motors because there's a lot to this and I might have to break that up. But anyway, uh, my name is Julio, Aircon Academy. I hope this helped. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel and you follow me on Facebook. Thank you.